labor force is growing in this area, um, population is growing, and we have a significant number of students who um, could and will be prepared for college, but there are not the, there's not the capacity um, at four-year universities that we need. That Cal State, the Cal State campus has been a phenomenal addition to this area, but it was six years ago when a student could start and finish a bachelor's degree in the Coachella Valley, and that's for 71,000 students. Uh, I also wanted to point out that uh, since the growth of these career academies, transportation, advanced technology have grown, and public ser uh, service as, as well. So there are students who are learning skills in these career academies that are going to be relevant for the future of transportation, logistics, and such, and mobility. One anecdotal example is a student who was in our, uh, an intern in our office, our office is in Palm Desert, <clears throat> at Hoagley and Cook Street. Um, she lived in uh, Mecca, and uh, she went to COD, and uh, she, it would take her two hours by bus to get to her college classes. Now, with, the, with some relief of the, the East Valley campuses, that's been uh, eased up, but to get to our internship, she'd get up at 4.30 in the morning uh, to make it to our office in Palm Desert <coughs> at 8 o'clock, and she was one of the hardest workers uh, that we've had, and then she'd get back on the bus uh, at 4.30 or 5 o'clock at night and make it home at uh, 7.30 at night. So Sunline is actually at the table with us on this uh, team and we are working on what we might do to solve uh, for this. What are, what are innovative solutions? And I think that's what we're talking about today. Um, but one in particular uh, example of how all of this sort of comes together is that the, one of the academies, the Renewable Energy Academy at Desert Hot Springs High School, made the decision that they would make as their, uh, their um, practical learning project this year an assessment of the obstacles facing students to get to work based learning. So we're a small transit agency. We're one of the smaller, but we are probably one of the most well-known across the world for our hydrogen program and what we've done in clean fuels. Um, we are a big employer here in the Valley. We have 353 employees, which a lot of people don't realize. Um, and we are a technology company that provides transit. So I'll talk a little bit more about that and what we provide for future employees here in the desert. Why is that important to the Valley? It puts us on the map as being the place to go to test, use, and observe hydrogen fuel cell equipment in operation. And I'm going to talk about a center that we're building that may be of interest to the rest of the group. I would love to see the Valley put itself on the map as the environmental hub. If we could just get, you know, if you think about a school you want to go to to be an attorney, several pop into mind, you want to be a veterinarian. If you want to go to school for environmental science like I'm doing right now, there isn't a school that pops up in your mind. We need to build one, and this is the perfect place for it to be with all we have going on between the windmill, windmill farm, Sunline, the Salton Sea. I just think that that's an opportunity worth exploring. We're also really focused on attack, uh, attracting talented and passionate people to work where we work because we don't have to be a bus driver to work at Sunline. You can be a scientist and work at Sunline. In fact, I have several who do, who didn't grow up thinking that they were going to become scientists, but they know more about a hydrogen molecule than most people do that are in the science field. So we have lots of environmentally friendly options for people that are looking for a science-based career. Mobility is a service, and from, from I, I kind of made an acute name, Austin Mass. Um, and again, I'm going to talk a little bit about what the new trend in urban mobility is, uh, and particularly I think what it is not, because you're going to hear mobility as a service mentioned a lot of times. TNCs like to mention it. I'll say off the bat, TNCs tend to say we're Mass or Moss, depending on how you want to call it, and TNCs are part of it potentially, but they're not. It's not. It's not Uber. That's not what. It is. It's really the idea of tying together individual modes seamlessly so that people have access to them that's convenient, that's cost effective, that doesn't leave anybody behind, literally speaking, in terms of being able to access things. And it's the compendium of all modes. And again, multimodal and mode agnostic. Uh, again, I see the word MOS preempted all the time by companies saying, we're a MOS company. And I'm like, the, the, the answer is we can participate in MOS. No company is Moss standalone, it's the ability to fit into that. And having Uber Pool, by the way, is not Moss. It could potentially be part of Moss, but it's not Moss in itself. <laughs>